If you support IT equipment, at some point you'll desperately need to connect something to a wired network with a patch cable that you just don't have available. Making a network patch cable is one of those small but important skills that you'll find useful. So today we're going to talk about making a patch cable, uh, actually a, a CAT5e patch cable, but you'll find that uh, the information here is relevant for CAT5 or CAT6. So we're first going to look at the connector and many people call this connector that you see here uh, an RJ45 that's sort of the colloquial name for it this whole connector and standard is covered by an organization called EIA TIA and they published a standard called the 568 standard and they published actually two specifications for how you could put these colored pairs inside uh, a connector. And the connector actually is properly termed uh, an 8P8C. Eight pins, oops, eight connector. So it's an EIA TIA 568 standard. The connector is actually an 8P8C, uh, often termed an RJ45. And the wiring standard adheres to one of two variations on a theme. It's either T568A or T568B. We don't use the B standard much in Canada, so we're not going to talk about that. So if you're creating a network cable generally they're all created to the A, um, A standard. You'll find that many patch panels and some um, CAT5 jacks will actually have an A or a B and a little color code sort of embedded in the in the device itself to help you guide how to make it. So you may see A and B on the actual physical device. Now there's actually two different uh, two different types of wire, and we talked about this uh, the other day. You can have stranded, and you can have solid wire, and there's two different types of connector. If you're using the stranded type of wire, so this down here shows uh, an example of a cable with stranded wire. You have lots of little strands in here. The connector is more of a spike and that spike goes through this connector to make a connection. But if you're using solid wire you have a different type of connector so it's really important that when you buy your 8PAC or RJ45 uh, crimp connectors that you get the right type. Just don't take any out of a bag and think they're going to use, think they're going to work. In this type here the solid wire is cupped between um, there's two prongs here, one on each side. Now why is that? Well, the big thing here that you need to do is you need to make a gas-tight seal. What do we mean by gas-tight seal? And this uh, is important in anything you're crimping, whether it be your electrical wire in your house with MAR connectors or these types of crimp connections. Gas-tight means that no oxygen molecules will get between the connector and the wire. Why is that? Well, oxygen uh, creates oxides. So if you get some oxides or rust in between here, what will happen is it will push those connectors apart. Uh, so everything has to be tight enough to make a gas tight seal. So you've all seen the examples where someone's fixed a lamp cord and they've just twisted the wires together, maybe taped it. Uh, that's not gas tight. And what will happen over time is that oxides will build up on that and you'll get an intermittent connection, you'll get some resistance, it will heat up, potentially cause a fire. If you have a MAR connector, it pushes those connectors tight enough to make that gas tight seal. So don't think you can just twist things together or make an improper crimp. This has to be done using the proper plugs and the proper, uh, proper connectors. Before we go too much further, let's talk about straight through and crossover cables. Now, you can make what's called a straight through cable a whole 
bunch of different ways. As long as you have the same wire going to pin 1 on one end of the cable and the same wire going to the other, that's a straight through cable. I think 2 connects to 2 and so on. However, there are many different ways, you, uh, patterns of colors that you could use here and an uh, unknowledgeable uh, installer is just going to do whatever whatever wire sort of come to his fingers first and he's just going to put them all in and make sure they're the same at both ends. You cannot do that according to the T568A uh, standard. There's a specific uh, set of colors that you have to adhere to and it has to do with uh, crosstalk and noise and it's very important that you do this. But we're going to look at straight through cables first. So that's the idea of a straight through cable is that as long as you connect up pin 1 to pin 1 and 2 to 2 and so on, that's a straight through cable. So how does this work? Well, if we have a computer here, computers transmit on pins 1 and 2 and receive on 3 and 6. Now not all network gear does that. You'll find a hub, for instance, it transmits on 3 and 6 and 1 and 2. Well, why is that? Well, computers typically connect to hubs or switches. And if we have a straight through cable, that means that the transmitter on the computer of 1 and 2 is going to be tied to 1 and 2 on the hub, but now on the hub that's the receiver. So transmitter to receiver. Well, that's what we want. And on the hub, receiver, or sorry, transmitter on 3 and 6 uh, connect up to the receiver. Uh, 3 and 6 on the computer. Now a hub typically connects into a router and since the hub is transmitting on 3 and 6 the router is receiving on 3 and 6. So everything can be connected up with straight through uh, cables and everything seems to be fine. But what if I want to connect two computers together? What happens if I use a straight through cable? Well, there's some danger here because if we look at what happens, 1 and 2 are wired to 1 and 2. Well, in the computers, those are both transmitters. So this is transmitting this way, this is transmitting this way, and electrically that's bad. It can actually cause shorts. It can damage a network card in either or both of these computers. So how do we fix that? Well, we can do it using a special cable called a crossover cable. And we're not going to show how to wire crossover cables, but a crossover cable switches the pair so that 1 and 2 here is wired to 3 and 6. So this is no longer a straight through cable. And 3 and 6 are wired to 1 and 2. And if we have a crossover cable, everything's fine. Well, how come we don't worry about that too much anymore? Well, we don't worry too much about it anymore because most ports on network cards and hubs are what are called auto-sensing and they can automatically flip or reverse their pairs 1 and 2 and 3 and 6 inside the little plug. So if I have a straight through uh, network uh, cable it can actually adjust and it can do the crossing over uh, in the device itself and it doesn't need to be done in the cable. But be aware if you have older hardware if, for instance, you were, had an old router and, were, and an old PC and was attaching a PC to a router, you would have to use a crossover cable. So that need may still exist, but it is starting to uh, go away because of auto sensing in ports. So now we'll look at uh, one type of problem that can exist if you're not too careful about wiring, improper wiring. So here's a wire, get this off, where someone has just wired pins 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8 uh, on one RJ45, just whatever's come out of the cable conveniently and hasn't worried about the color codes. Well, what can happen? Well, for pairs 1 and 2, they're going to transmit and they're going to receive on pins 1 and 2, and that's not going to be too much of a problem. But remember, uh, a PC or a hub transmits on 3 and 6. So 3 is going to be one wire of one pair, and it's going to be a different wire in a different pair. So now we've lost the advantage of the twisted pair. These two signals should be in the same pair. And what it can do is cause a lot of noise, and it 
could actually mean that you have so much noise that uh, packets are retransmitted and if they're retransmitted too much uh, you can actually really impact the bandwidth of your network and affect all your machines on your network. Um, this is called a split pair and you need a special tester to actually pick up a split pair because electrically it's connecting one to one, two to two, three to three and so on. But split pairs are bad uh, and that's why you need to adhere to the proper uh, wiring standard. So now we're going to look at how to make uh, a patch cable and put a basically crimp a, an RJ45 uh, end on. So you have the tools you'll need. You'll see the RJ45, a pair of cutters, a stripper, and a crimp tool. And of course some wire. So I've shown uh, a wire here. Now in the crimp tool you should have a ratcheting uh, crimp tool and you'll see that there's a little ratchet mechanism here. One of the problems with crimp tools is that it's easy to pull it in say halfway and not make a proper crimp and then release it. So a ratcheting will as you pull it in it will not release until you pull it in the full amount that uh, that is standard. You'll see this ratcheting tool work that way. Pulled in a little bit, doesn't release. I have to pull it in all the way before it will release and it makes the crimp properly. Now I've got one pair here I haven't untwisted so I'm going to untwist that. You need to smooth out all the kinks so part of this preparation is in making sure there are no bends and all those wires are straight. And the next part of it is to make sure you get the wires exactly in this code. You'll notice that the orange pair is actually split, the blue pair is in between. So it takes some time to get that um, straight before inserting into the RJ45 plug. So I've got to cut it off, that's too long. You want to make sure that some jacket goes inside the plug and you're actually going to part of the crimp is to make sure the jacket gets held fast into the plug so if there's any strain on the cable it uh, tugs on the jacket not on the actual connectors. Got to make sure that this is straight across. Could use a good pair of scissors. Side cutters are often easier. And when you insert this, make sure the green is going into pin 1. You can see from the diagram here where pin 1 is. It's on the left if the little tab is on the bottom. And when you insert that all the way, at the very end here, if you look at an end view, you should see all the conductors in all eight of those wires because the crimp is in this part right here. So you're basically crimping stakes which are right at this point. So you want to make sure in the end there that you can see all those uh, copper wires. After you've done that uh, it's simply a matter of inserting this into the proper crimp tool and these crimp tools are usually about fifty to a hundred dollars you want to make sure you get a good one. Push it all the way in and crimp properly. And what you'll notice here with a proper connection is that the jacket is, uh, you'll see the jacket here is properly um, brought into the connector and will act as a strain release. It, it's actually crimped against the wire as well. So the final thing is to do both ends and test it with a proper test cable. Don't just make a cable and think it's good. Uh, always test them properly with a proper network tester.